Around this time, exactly one year ago, we came together in Wallingford, Connecticut to record our very first album and that one too. Recording and putting together this album was a really exciting process for us because it brought together music by four composers who we had a very long, meaningful relationship with. Um, and composers who essentially have helped define what sandbox percussion is through the music that they write. So the composers that we feature on this album are Andy Akiho, David Kroll, Amy Beth Kirsten, and Thomas Katcha. And each of those four composers are people that we've worked with in many different projects over the years. And that's kind of what we like to do. We like to find people to work with whose aesthetic matches ours or who we really feel like have something important to say with percussion and then work with them over several pieces over many years to kind of realize that vision. And that's what we've tried to do here. In Connecticut, we were at a place called Choate Rosemary Hall, which is actually a school that one of our members, Johnny Allen, teaches at. We are here at Choate Rosemary Hall, and we are recording our very first album. So right now we're recording Thomas Kotcheff's Not Only That One, But That One, and That Too. We're taking a little lunch break right now. We're gonna start recording the first movement in a little bit. Let's check it out. You can choke. I know, Come it is dangerous. Do more. What? I oh, got it on tape, man. You could probably slow-mo that thing, right? Oh, absolutely. All right, lunch is done. How was your Thai food, Johnny? Oh, it's good. I'm glad I didn't finish it. They gave me a pretty healthy portion. Yeah, they did for me too, but I finished it. You did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to start recording the first movement. Here we go. It was a recording session for us, but we also kind of treated it kind of like a retreat. Uh, we kind of wanted to, to get out of New York City, to get to somewhere where we could really sort of stretch our legs and relax and come together and really focus on this music. It was great because it had enough space, but it wasn't a soundproof room, like a soundproof recording studio. So we met a few different obstacles along the way. We have been recording here for the past couple hours. We had to take a pause because we realized that this oil water heater came on in the basement below us and it started creating like this whistling sound. And so we're just gonna finish a little bit early. There was a street a right outside right the here. chapel that had constant cars and, and traffic just running by. So when we were recording Thomas Kotcheff's piece, most of it's pretty loud and bombastic, but there are some moments that are really soft and beautiful, and the traffic noise was really getting in the way. We literally had Thomas go out into the street and stop the traffic. Someone honked me, she was just like... We got it. Yeah. First movement's done. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thomas. Anything for art. <laughs> Next piece we're doing is haiku, and we are relocating to this really cool theater that we just found downstairs in the chapel. Thank goodness, because it turns out traffic is loud. Traffic and noise is it's hard to it's hard to record Especially when there's a street right there. <laughs> I, don't love, I love that piece. I'll Thomas, the recording is done. How do you how do you feel about how your piece sounds? Oh man, I feel really really excited. A few holdups today. I came down here, it was pitch black in this room, and they were, they were playing by iPad light only. Because <laughs> <laughs> the lights, noise. those yeah. lights make a hum. <laughs> so it's pitch black in here. <laughs> Day two of our recording is done. We'll have more for you tomorrow from the theater recording Andy's Haiku 2 and She's a Myth by Amy Beth Kirsten. Andy's piece Haiku 2 uh, was originally written for the group Load Bang. Uh, and Andy wrote them this set of haiku. Uh, and when we heard this one in particular, Haiku 2, we immediately thought that it could be arranged for a percussion quartet. We took all the pitched material that he had written for those instruments for load bang and translated them to other instruments that Andy likes. Instruments like uh, tuned ceramic bowls, tuned metal pipes, tuned wooden planks, and then a lot of junk metal. Um, a pot lid, a tin can, a bowl, things like that. When we were putting together this album, we kept coming back to music by Amy Beth Kirsten. Amy is somebody who we've had a really long working relationship with. We worked on a long uh, evening length performance with her called Quixote at Peak Performances a couple years ago. In preparation for that performance, 
Amy had written some, a few shorter pieces for us to play. One of them was She is a Myth. It was originally a percussion trio um, and vocal trio, but she kind of rearranged it and added an extra percussion part, so now it's actually a percussion quartet with vocal trio. So when we premiered the piece, we had three vocalists that were singing the individual parts, but specifically for this album, we didn't only want to just feature Amy's music, we wanted to feature Amy herself. So she actually multi-tracked all three of the vocal parts on the album. So all the voices that you hear on the album in her piece are actually just her singing. She uses all these different book sounds. So we might be rubbing pages together, we might be flipping the cover back and forth. Um, so she really creates a different sound world in percussion that we really wanted to feature on the album. David Kroll's Music for Percussion Quartet is a commission of ours from a few years ago. We joined with a consortium of other groups and schools across the country to commission this piece, and it quickly became one of our favorite pieces to play. It features two widely disparate forms of percussion playing. The first and third movements represent the city that David lives in now, Brooklyn. They're very hectic, polyrhythmic pieces with the different instruments playing different, uh, different speeds on top of each other. It's a, it's a very New York kind of sound. And then the second and fourth movements are the complete opposite. They represent David's background growing up in Alaska, and they feature us uh, bowing the keyboard percussion instruments, making these beautiful meditative kind of sonic landscapes. And the juxtaposition between these two different types of writing was one of the things that really struck us about this piece. He had just kind of a mock-up track of himself playing those pieces on guitar, on electric guitar. Uh, the second and fourth movements, they just created this incredible sound on the electric guitar that, that he was able to achieve. When we were mixing and mastering the album, David sent us a version of the fourth movement that actually had just a little hint of guitar in the background, just a few little impro improvised notes that he added in. Um, and it kind of brought us back to the way that we remembered the piece when he had first sent us the MIDI mock-up. So having that little cameo on the album is, is something that's really cool. So the music on this album represents some of these long-term collaborations with these composers. But for us, for, for the four of us personally, it represents these really meaningful friendships that we have with these people. We've spent many hours and years, in, in some cases, working with these composers on lots of different pieces. We've been through a lot together, and it's really personal and really meaningful to us to be able to share uh, the results of these collaborations with these important people with all of you. We hope that everyone who listens to this album will have a better understanding of what four musical corners are of sandbox percussion. We also hope that you'll get a deeper understanding for what percussion is and what it means to us. It can be very driving, really intense and hyperrhythmic, but it can also be very sensitive, lyrical and otherworldly. Thanks so much for following along in this video. We really hope that you enjoy listening to this album as much as we did making it. We're, uh, we're done recording. That's a wrap on our recording session. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh! What? What? No way! He just got both of those from that far away. On camera. <laughs> <laughs>